Good morning. It's Janet Sunshine. How you guys doing, man? Saturday morning, June 1st. I want to spend some time uh, reflecting. Uh, today's a big day, June 1st in my life. Uh, today is the day that I was diagnosed with leukemia uh, and found myself in a world of shit, man. I want to start by telling you what, how this all transpired. You know, I, I did new construction uh, when I started my business in 97. New construction was, was what I did. I did about 250 houses a year, and uh, we were very good at it, but then 2007, 2008 came around, and the world was coming to an end uh, financially in this country. People were standing outside, uh, taking their money out of banks, banks were, were closing, big banks were closing, uh, it was a tough time. I managed to get through that, didn't file for bankruptcy, have never filed for bankruptcy. Uh, we get out to 2014, I hadn't done a new house in probably four or five, I, I did maybe a couple, but not many. Uh, basically new construction was, it wasn't worth doing, you know. I mean, the little bit that there was, it wasn't worth doing. But in 2014, uh, I saw an ad on Craigslist, and it's, it was a guy who was looking, he wanted to start building houses, and uh, he had this long ad in Craigslist, and it had every subcontractor listed but the plumber. So I called the guy up. I said, hey, you know, was this just a mistake, or do you already have a plumber? And he said, oh, no, 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 I'd love to talk to you, you know. So we set up a meeting. I went and I talked to the guy, and I got in my uniform, and I was pretty squared away looking. I was 50 years old. I'd been doing this shit, you know, for a long time at that point. I knew my stuff. Uh, I was totally equipped to, to handle this. This guy wanted to build 20 houses. And... Uh, after our meeting, he gave me the contract. So in 2014, on my birthday, was the day I started these 20 houses. And it was tough. The first house this guy did with a bunch of new contractors, it took like three days to get this little two bath house uh, roughed in because the form guys had the forms in the wrong place. They weren't high, the elevation was wrong. And I'll be honest, man, it was August in Florida, and I was dying. I hadn't had, uh, hadn't done new houses, and to start out in the middle of the summer or the end, you know, in August in Florida, it was a dog fight. We got through that. I got all 20 houses in the ground. Started on, in August, 2014. Finished 17 of those houses by uh, around the middle of May, but I was really feeling bad, man. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, you know, I was never one of them guys who went to the hospital or went and even got checked up by a doctor, unless a limb was hanging off. Uh, but I was really feeling bad, like cramping up on the way home, driving home, Northport, uh, it's about a half hour drive from my house and that drive at the end of every day I was just in pain like you wouldn't believe man my back was all cramped up I mean I was having muscle spasms uh, I was in bad shape and that went on uh, right up to like May 31st I was watching this show Dr. G She's a coroner, and at this point, I was white as a ghost, sleeping most of the day. I had no energy, uh, just beat up. 
and I watched this show, Dr. G, and uh, she diagnosed she's a coroner and or medical examiner, and she uh, she tries to figure out why people die, you know, natural causes. You know, it was obviously not a homicide, but they die of natural causes, but she wants to nail it down. So anyways, this guy that she was highlighting that night, it was a Sunday night, and uh, she was highlighting a black guy about my age, and he was exhibiting all the same symptoms that I had. And I uh, just dropped dead on the job. And at the end of the show, she said, hey, you know, if you're not feeling well, you know, go get a checkup. And I was like, wow, never thought of that, you know. So anyways, she said, when you go, tell them you need a full blood screening. So I get up early Monday morning on June 1st, today, 10, nine years ago. And I go down to the Quick Care, Sarasota Memorial Quick Care. And I walk in, I'm waiting for them to open the door. I got there so early. And I walk in and I tell the guy, I said, I, the doctor, I said, I need a physical, man. And uh, he says, why, what's going on? I said, I just don't feel right. And uh, I said, I need a full blood screening. And he's like, what do you mean you need a blood screening? I, you know, what, what, what do you need checked? I said, I need everything checked, man. Whatever you, whatever you can do, you need to check me. And literally, I, my gums were white. My face was white. Uh, I had no energy. After the visit, he tells me, you're, you're, uh, I just think you're, you have fatigue. And I was like, all right, good. I, he says, uh, we'll have your blood work back by about two o'clock. And, uh, about two thirty that day, I get a call from the quick care. My blood work came back and they said, there's a team of doctors waiting for you at Sarasota Memorial Hospital, uh, emergency room. And uh, I drove myself there. And uh, by the end of the night, uh, they were pretty sure that I had cancer. And uh, I had bags of blood hooked up to me. I had platelets pouring into my arms. And my life was spinning out of control, man. And uh, it was on from that point, man. I ended up spending like 47 days in the hospital. Uh, between Sarasota Memorial and uh, Moffitt Cancer Center. Eventually, I think it took almost two weeks, man, before I got my seven and three chemotherapy, and I was begging for it, you know? I mean, I thought I was dying. Uh, I was dying, there's no doubt. My body stopped producing the shit that I need to stay alive. So, I was 50 years old, and uh, I thought it was over for me. So I immediately, I had these houses going in Northport and I'm in a hospital and I only had one helper working with me. And uh, I called the guy up that I was working for and I said, hey man, I said, I got bad news, brother. I said, I just got diagnosed with leukemia. And this guy himself was a, was a cancer patient. He had some stuff going on with his throat and uh, he was a cancer survivor. And he said, listen, man, he said, and, th and the way I always set my contracts up, I get 40% of the contract on the rough end, 20% at tub set, and then I left 40% on the table for the final so that I had the money to, to finish the house. I didn't front load it where I got all my money up front and then I have to come out of my pocket to finish the house. Uh, but anyways, this guy was really cool. He said, listen, man, he said, I got you. He said, you got enough money here to finish these houses, even if it costs me a little bit more to have somebody come in. Uh, he said, just get healthy, man. I understand where you are, I've been there. And he actually went out and he and his wife, very, very nice people, bought me a book and a couple other things and sent it to me up at Moffitt. Uh, and they were very supportive of me. Unfortunately for him, uh, his cancer came back and it ended up killing him. Uh, but he had bought 250 lots in Northport 
and he started this home building company and uh, he was a, he was a uh, retired he, his, he was an ophthalmologist and they, they bought some big company bought out his business in Maryland and uh, he had lots of money he bought 250 lots in Northport and he wanted to build those houses but anyways uh, he was a great guy and uh, unfortunately cancer got him uh, so I, I got my chemo, my first round of chemo, uh, which is inpatient and outpatient. You know, I had to go three times a week uh, after I got out of the hospital. They got it in remission, and I had to go to uh, chemo three times a week for like four months or five months. Uh, I had to drive, I had to go three times a week in my first, I had to get it twice a day it, at the hospital. I got it at six in the morning and uh, for an hour and then I'd have to come back at four or five o'clock and get another hour of chemo and then drive home. Uh, so I was leaving my house and I was, I was in rough shape, man and uh it's like it was a challenge you know to even have the energy to do that get up at four in the morning drive to tampa get chemo all day and drive home i get home at like 7 seven thirty, and uh i did that and it was in remission you know we knocked it back and i formed a great relationship with my my doctor kubal up in uh moffitt cancer center and his nurse elena uh, and as a matter of fact, it's funny that uh, my first appointment with him after I got out of, you know, after I had been an, an inpatient, uh, my first appointment with him and, and Elena uh, was on my birthday again, on August. Uh, I won't tell you my birthday, but in August. And uh, I remember Elena singing happy birthday to me, man. And they were just so loving, and I and I talked the other day about a woman who uh, who said she's she just got re she he, she had just retired, and for the first time in thirty or forty years, she didn't wake up in the morning with this in this flight uh, fight or flight mode, and I can tell you that for the first time in my life. I didn't have, I had like surrendered, man. I knew that, you know, this shit's out of my hands, man. I wasn't on a treadmill anymore, especially when I was in the hospital. I had people taking care of me, basically unconditional love, shit that I never uh, experienced in my life. I never felt that way. Uh, and I always say that it was the worst thing that ever happened to me, but in so many, even more respects, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, the people, the nurses, the doctors, these are amazing people, man. So I, I, my cancer's in remission. I'm going once a month or once a week or whatever to see the, um, the, the, uh, the blood doctor and Dr. Kubal and they do my tests and where everything's going good and I get out to uh, like I don't know November of 2016 and I go in and get my blood work and he comes in and he says hey man uh, he says it's back bro he said we gotta get you I need you to go down and get a bone marrow uh, not a bone marrow uh, a biopsy and what a biopsy is, and I've had like probably 13 of them, where they stick a, a like a plug, they go in through the back into your hip bone, and they pull out a sample of your bone marrow. Uh, and he said, I need to get that done today, unfortunately. And when they do that, they put you under. Uh, they, they give you propofol, which is that shit Michael Jackson used to used to take to go to sleep and I just I gotta tell you I love that shit man it's fucking lights out uh, but anyways he said we gotta get it today man 
he said that unless you're you don't want to do it without anesthesia i said i'll do it without anesthesia so we went down there that was the second time because that i did it without anesthesia and they're literally hammering on this thing to bust through your hip bone to get into that marrow and uh it ain't fun it's fucking terrible but they confirmed that it was back and he said, the only thing we can do is uh, you need to have a bone marrow transplant. And uh, lucky for me, I come from a big family. My sister, uh, Anne, she's not even a year older than me. She was born in August, too. Uh, she was a perfect match for me. And um, she donated her bone marrow. And I went in to Moffitt Cancer Center on January 4th and uh, they gave me uh, a shot of uh, chemotherapy that was designed to kill off all my bone marrow and uh, basically it uh, killed, killed my bone marrow so what they did and this is all amazing the technology they have the fact that they can pull uh, bone marrow out of my sister's blood uh, I see a lot of people trashing doctors and they don't trust them and they talk about vaccines and all this shit they know nothing about it they know nothing about it believe me they think everything's a fucking conspiracy people out to get you if you don't haven't used a doctor yet at some point before you get off out of this fucking planet, you're gonna need one and you're gonna you're gonna realize just how special they are. And they're not out to fucking, you know, kill you or take advantage of you. Uh anyway, so on January 4th I got got this deadly dose of chemo and my numbers just started to tank. I mean, I was basically on life support, and uh, by January 10th, they, I was at the point where they needed to give me my sister's bone marrow, and uh, they did that, and that's my new birthday on January 10th, was, that's what they call it. Uh, they gave me my sister's uh, bone marrow, and basically it was like a bag uh, of looked like watermelon juice, man, and it was only about that big, man. They fed it into me through a pick line uh, that I had hoses in my arms and in down into my heart, and uh, they gave me that. And within within uh, less than two days, they could see that my numbers were starting to come back, like I was producing blood cells, man. And I stayed in that ward. The, the uh, bone marrow transplant ward. I think I was there for like 34 days and uh, I got to the point where I was still in bad shape but I got to the point where they could let me go but I'd have to come back every single day for two months and uh, so I luckily the, the American Cancer Society has what's called a Hope Lodge and you put in you you put in a request to get a room there, and it's all free, man. It's just unfucking believable. Uh, so I did that, and I got a, and it was just across the street, literally across the parking lot. Uh, so I did that, and I stayed in the Hope Lodge for uh, two months. But when you're at the Hope Lodge. Um, you need to have somebody there with you, somebody to stay with you. And my sister Sal, who is just always, she's always been there for me. Uh, my family and me, our relationship is a little strained. It always has been. But within all of that, my sister Sal has always been there for me uh, and her husband, Nick. Um, if I got locked up when I was a kid, I didn't call my mom, I called my sister Sal and her, and her husband Nick because uh, yeah, my mom would hang up on me. She'd say, fuck you, have a good life. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we stayed there for two months, man, and I came home 
uh, on April. I went in on on uh, December. I mean January fourth, and I didn't come home until April thirteenth. And when I came home, I was scared to death, man. I was I weighed one hundred and ninety five pounds. I lost fifty five fucking pounds, man. Uh, in that time, most of it in the first month uh, when I went when I got diagnosed. Uh, but I was scared to death that first night staying by myself in my house. I will say that my my ex wife and my daughter they were very uh, caring. They took care of me. They came here. They they bought me all kinds of shit to keep me healthy, good food. My ex-wife worked at Whole Foods and uh, it was a challenge, but I'm nine years out today, man, from the day I got diagnosed. I'm still here. I thought I was going to die. I sold all my trucks. I sold my equipment, uh, most of it, but I held on to enough. I got my one work truck. I, I had a I had a uh, two F-350 extended wheelbase, 11 foot utility bodies with pipe racks on the top. I had an E-350 uh, or E-250 extended uh, van, like a service van. Uh, I sold my Jetta shit, I sold the van, I sold the two trucks. And I still see them things driving around, man. I want them back. Uh, especially that first truck I bought when I went into business, that was a big deal for me, man. I had a 97 uh, F350, bought brand spanking new. I bought the cabin chassis, had a nine foot utility, I mean, a 11 foot utility body put on it. Nap Hide. Nap Hide makes a great uh, utility body. And uh, that truck meant a lot to me, man meant a lot to me. The other day, it's funny because I saw, I found a, a check stub from the first guy that I worked for, and I worked for him for a long time, man. Uh, I think six years, and then I bounced around a little bit, but uh, I ended up going into business for myself in 97, and I look at that check stub, and I was making like $12 an hour or something. Uh, nine dollars an hour I don't know I started work for that guy in in uh, 1988 and he was paying me like seven bucks an hour man by the end of the week he gave me a raise but he was a fucking tightwad he wasn't giving out the money he wasn't sharing I was making him a ton of money uh, working my ass off but it's all water under the bridge guys uh, I've been spared uh, I've been blessed, you know, to have Moffitt Cancer Center, you know, an hour down the road from where I live. I love these people. I still see the same nurses. I go up and, you know, I was in what, what's considered to be four, the fourth floor on the north side of the original Moffitt Cancer Center, four north. And uh, make it a point to go up there and, and say hello to the women who took care of me, man. These women are incredible, man. They're just angels, man. And I tell them all the time that I feel like, you know, you, you, you women dragged me off the battlefield of life, man. And you resuscitated me. And uh, I wouldn't be here without them. I wouldn't be here without a whole bunch of people. And, uh, like I said, my, my relationship with my family is a little strained. It always has been kind of the black sheep of the family. And I'm good with that. And sometimes in life, you know, you just, you get to a point where you can't fucking, you just don't want to do it anymore, you know? I mean, I'm going to be 60. 60 years of trying to make a fucking relationship work. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's a combination of me and them. But I just can't can't do it anymore, man. So that's my cancer story. I still take a lot of medication. Probably 15 pills a day. Uh, I drink a lot of water. I don't drink soda. I drink 
coffee and water basically but I do have uh, I feel a lot better when I'm feeding my cells uh, by eating good eating kale and uh, veggies the bread bread's got a bread is just terrible for you man it really is uh, but damn it's so fucking good I love nothing more than some good Italian bread and a fucking stick of butter but anyways guys so at this point I'm very very healthy uh, my blood work I gotta see my doctor this month I think maybe in the next maybe next week uh, they rescheduled me Dr. Kubal I'm still with this guy ten, almost 10 years a lot's changed in his life he got married he's got a couple of kids now uh, and it's just uh, my other doctor she Dr. Mishra is just a beautiful woman she's my transplant doctor and I just love them, man. I love Dr. Kubal, and I uh, love Dr. Mishra. I even told her, I love you, and do you want to be my wife? No. She's like, We're, we got to be professional. So, that's it, guys. Hear the chimes? Angels are flying around. That's how I think of it, man. And I just try to do the right thing every day. I come up short a lot. I'm not perfect by any fucking means. Uh, I swear like a drunken sailor. But, you know, when you come up to a guy and say, Hey, you fucking homeless guy, you want some lunch? I don't think he's worried about me swearing. You know what I'm saying? I've been given a lot in this life. Uh, I'm very, very uh, grateful, man. Just fucking grateful. And I think back of all my friends, man. I grew up in a tough place, man. A lot of my friends didn't make it. They died early, young. My brother, same thing, man. Tough sledding. Life is not easy, guys, uh, and it forms you. I'm, I'm the person I am because of what I've been through my whole fucking life. Drug addiction, I, I got through that. Uh, I was a drug addict, man, no doubt. I mean, I always worked, but I was fucking hooked on cocaine, man, early in my life. My sister's boyfriend, you know fucking turning me on at 17 years old, giving me fucking cocaine, and I was hooked from the time, first time I used it, and uh, about 10 years of my life was wasted on that shit, uh, caused a lot of problems, but I, I decided to, to kick that habit, and I did, man, uh, life is a challenge, guys, life is a fucking challenge, it could have could be a lot harder. I never got locked up. I never had to do time. Uh, I went in the Navy to try to get away from what I was doing in my neighborhood. My friends were dying, getting murdered. I mean, it was fucking tough, man. My best friend, kid I hung around with every day of my fucking life, got stabbed, man, and died. His girlfriend comes to my house at fucking five in the morning covered in blood tells me Mikey's dead. I was like, what? Tough life, man. And uh, I'm just here. It makes you tougher. Uh, and it forms the person you are. I just, you know. I'm a product of my environment. Unfortunately, I grew up in a place where there was a lot of bullshit going on. Uh, and there's a lot of bullshit going on in in places that you would never imagine. You see these suburbs and these, uh, you know, beautiful, clean-cut neighborhoods. I grew up in the inner city, uh, but there's just the same shit going on in those neighborhoods, man. Kids dying from drug overdoses, all that shit. But uh, I hate to bring you guys down. I just wanted to share that. Today's a very important day in my life. I remember a lot of dates. Uh, 
you know, I don't know if you call them milestones or just uh, speed bumps, but uh, that's it, man. Nine years today, and I hope there's going to be many, many more days like this, man. I don't want to die. I don't want to not be here anymore. And I was, I was fucking heartbroken uh, for myself when I found out I had cancer. I was like, I don't want to fucking die. I want to live, man. I like living. I like this thing called life. Anyways, God bless you guys. If there are some of you out there, uh, men and women who are dealing with cancer, find somebody you're comfortable with uh, so you don't have to worry and let them do their thing. Don't try to tell them how to do their job or be a thorn, be a prick. I was a, I was a, a good patient, man. I did what they told me to do. I didn't question them. I didn't fucking... I know nothing about leukemia, you know? The fuck am I to question what they say? They done. You know, Moffitt Cancer Center? Thousands and thousands of patients have gone through there. Unfortunately, some of them don't make it, man. And uh, I just feel blessed. It's a beautiful day. I'm sitting here looking at these plants in my, in my, uh, the chimes are chiming, the birds are chirping. That could have all been gone. But they say eternity is not a bad place to be. So uh, we'll see. Someday we're all going to end up there in eternity. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great day. God bless you. For you guys struggling out there with cancer, send me your address, man. I pass out these crosses up at Moffitt, and I pass them out all over the place. Uh, my faith was a big part of my recovery. I got right into that. When I was a kid, man, I asked, I was eight years old, man. I'm, I came from a fucked up place, guys. I mean, eight-year-old kids had tattoos all over them. You know, we were doing it ourselves with Indian ink. But I was a good kid, man. My, I mean, I, in my family, they, they thought I was a big asshole. But all my friends' parents loved me. They thought I was the nicest kid that ever they'd ever run into. So... All my friends have tattoos. They got, you know, their name on their fingers and these big, ugly, thick, gross fucking tattoos we put on with uh, Indian ink with some thread wrapped around the bottom of a needle. And you sit there poking yourself. So I go home and I ask my mother, I said, hey, Ma, I'm eight years old, man. I was like, hey, Ma, can I get a tattoo? She's like, get the fuck out of here. What are you, crazy? She didn't say that, but, you know, that's what she meant. So I did it anyways, like a good little boy. And I put this on here. I don't know if you can see this. It's a cross. See that little cross on my arm? It's very, very faint. Uh, I got the tattoo anyways, man. I've had that since I was eight years old, but... Even when I was eight, I believed in a higher power, man. And I needed God. <laughs> I needed God with me my whole fucking life. I've been in some shady shit, man. And, uh... My higher power got me through, man. I just, I was... Like I said about the, the uh, fight or flight, that went away. I was, I was more at peace my routine I didn't have to work I sold my condominiums uh, I was just on an even keel the only thing I was concerned with was get healthy and uh, so far it's all worked out I'm still struggling financially you get beat up man and you get cancer you can't go through all that shit I didn't file for bankruptcy a lot of guys do uh, and it's been tight. The last 10 years, it's been tight. Uh, unfortunately, early on, I was still living the way I lived when I was making a ton of fucking money and spent more than I should have, but I'm in good shape. Uh, and I'm sitting on a house that's got a lot, of, a lot of money in it, so that's my biggest issue right now, uh, trying to make ends meet. Um, 
Life's a challenge, guys. You either rise or you fall. You either deal with it. Some guys say, oh, you ain't never been in a fight in your life. Motherfucker, I've been in some fights. Proverbial fights. Try going through what I just told you about. Anyways, guys, have a great day. And uh, to all the nice people out there who subscribe or listen. Sorry guys, I cut you off. To all the guys out there, the, the people who support me and are kind and uh, not judgmental. But, and I'm kind of judgmental. I mean, I get it. I'm an asshole sometimes. Still got to work on stuff. But I appreciate you guys. I really do, man. And God bless you if you're a plumber out there and you're not feeling right. Go get your ass checked, man. Because we are exposed to a lot of shit in this in this trade in this industry, and you need to go get checked, man. Immediate, at least once or twice a year. Go get a physical with blood work, man. Uh, it's amazing to think that you know if you've ever looked at a blood screening in our bodies, does it does this on its own? It keeps all those numbers right right where they're supposed to be. But when something's broken. That shit goes haywire, man. And it shows up immediately in your blood work. It's all about the blood work, man. Uh, so on on a on a note of things not working, last night I get rudely awakened by this loud humming noise. Uh, and it's my air conditioner outside my window. And I get up to go turn it off, not turn it lower. And it appears to be working. The air's flowing out of the uh, vents. It's cold. So I'm thinking I got a bad fan out there. I turned it off and went back to bed. And I haven't... I got to go out. I'm going to pull the breaker at the, the disconnect out there. Then I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to turn it on. And then go back outside and put that fucking uh, breaker back in, the disconnect, put it in and see what happens. I think it's most likely the fan, but it's Saturday, man. And if I call a company, I know they're going to charge me seven, eight hundred fucking dollars to put a new fan in. Fuck that, Jack. Buy a new fan for a hundred bucks, probably. A new fan motor, maybe two hundred. We'll see what happens. I may have to go sleep at Nate's house for a fucking couple of days till Monday. Anyways, guys, have a great day. I enjoy sharing my life with you. I'm hoping uh, in all of this, it, I get a kick out of it. It's filling a void in my life. Uh, but I'm hoping that with my sharing all of this, uh, hopefully it's... It's uh, helping some people, somebody who's maybe in the same spot, who has similar circumstances, uh, and it's, it's actually helping people, teaching you something, not only about plumbing, but about life, and owning your own business, and uh, dealing with adversity, man, because life is full of fucking bumps, man, a lot of shit. God bless you guys. I love you guys. I don't even know you. I just love everybody, unless you're a crumper. <laughs>